What's up guys? Thank you for joining me in today's class. Welcome to Battle Structures. Before we begin, I would like to just remind you that if you haven't subscribed, just hit this button here and don't forget to click on this bell here to get notifications every time I upload a new video. Then also, you can also subscribe by clicking on this logo at the bottom of the screen. So thank you very much for joining me on today's class and let's start with the lesson. In the structure we have here, we have a five degree statically indeterminate structure and we are going to be using slope deflection method to solve it, which is the force deformation state of the structure. So in the end, we are going to come out with the moment diagram for the structure. So as I explained earlier on, the first step you have to do is to label all your joints and supports of the structure. So here I'm going to give labels, I'm going to give numbers to each joint and each support of this structure. So I'm going to call this, this joint one, this two, this is three, four, and five. Okay, so I'm done with the first step. The second step is to find the degree of freedom or the, the number of unknowns in the structure. As I explained earlier on, when you have two or more members joining at a joint or at a node, I'm going to pick that as an unknown. I'm going to pick the rotation at that point as an unknown. So when we look at joint or node one, we see that there are two members joining at this point. So I'm going to take it as, I'm going to take the rotation at point one as one unknown. What about joint two? Joint two, I have three members joining at one point. So I'm going to take the rotation at point two as another unknown. What about point three? At point three, I'm not going to take it as an unknown because there's just one member and at the end of this member, there's the support. So I'm not going to take it as an unknown. What about four and five? At four and five, there's no rotation at four and five because these points are fixed. So here, I'm just going to write unknowns of the structure. Okay, so now we have identified our degrees of freedom. And now the next step is to calculate the fixed end moments. So first we're going to look at the members with external forces. So let's, let me first write fixed end moments here. Okay, so as I said, there are just two members with external forces on them, which is member one, two and member two, three. So I'm going to write the fixed end moment for mem one, two and M, two one i'm also going to write for member two three i'm going to have m two three because there is a moment at this point but m three two is equal to zero because we have a pin support okay so i'm going to clean that up for the fixed end moments, the, the formulas are already given, okay? So for, for a member where both sides are fixed, like member one, two, both sides are fixed, okay? If you have a point load, let's say P, this moment here, M12 is equal to P times L over eight. And this moment here, M21, is equal to P, it's the same, PL over 8. But remember that we have a sign convention, which is in this direction. I'm going to draw the sign convention, which is positive in the counterclockwise direction. Right? Okay, so if this is my positive sign convention, it tells me that M12 
it's moving counterclockwise and the sign convention here is also moving counterclockwise so it's positive m1 to becomes pl over 8 m21 is moving clockwise but my sign convention is counterclockwise positive sign convention is counterclockwise so i'm going to have negative p l over 8 what about m23 for m23 if you have a fixed if you have a fixed support and the other end is a pin support with distributed load on it just as we can see in the structure here for member two three we have one end to be fixed the other end to be a pin support so here i'm going to this is two that is three so here i have a moment here which is m two three and this formula this fixed end moment is q if that is q if the distributed load is q is going to be q l squared over eight so here i then i check my sign convention my sign convention here this m23 is moving counterclockwise my sign convention is counterclockwise so m23 is positive q l squared over eight so you put all the all the numbers in it and you are going to get m12 to be 6.25 so let me just write 5 times 10 divided by 8 and this is going to be negative 5 times 10 divided by 8 and here i have 10 times 3 squared over 8 okay so let me just write it down so to differentiate between the fixed end moment and the internal moment within the structure i'm going to make the fixed end moment italic m so instead of capital m i'm going to make it a capital m but italic okay so let me just give the answers of these numbers I have m21 which is negative 6.25 then I have m italic m23 m23 which is equal to 11.25 okay so now I have my fixed end moment the next step is to find the member stiffness so for every member i'm going to write down the, the stiffnesses in each member so here let me copy the structure below so that we can look at it and just write the member stiffnesses so here i have the member stiffness and in i drew a table for each member so i here i have three columns and I'm going to put the member stiffness for each member into this table. So in the first column, I'm going to write the members. Here I have member one. I have member one, four, right? The next member, member one, two. I have member two, five. Then I have member two, three. Okay. In the next column, I'm going to write In the next column, I'm going to write the member stiffness, mi theta i equal to mj theta j, okay? And in the next column, I'm going to write the other one, which is mi theta j equal to mj theta i. Okay, so let's start with member 1-4. For member 1-4, we have a fixed end and a fixed end. So member 1-4 is something like that. Fixed. And that the other end is also fixed. 
okay so for member one four i'm going to have four ei over l four ei over l which is equal to four ei divided by six equal to four over six which is 0 0.67 approximately 0 0.67 and remember if you have a fixed fixed end m i theta i is 2 e i over l which is just half of this part so i'm going to directly write 2 over 6 times e i is equal to 0 point approximately 0 0.33 so the next thing, the me next member I'm going to write, I'm going to write the member stiffnesses is 1, 2. So for member 1, 2, we also have a fixed end and a fixed end. Okay, so for member 1, 2, I'm also going to have 4 EI over L, but I is 2. So I'm going to have 4 E times 2 I divided by what is the length of Member 1, 2, 10. This is going to give me 0 0.8. And for mi theta j, which is equal to mj theta i, I'm going to have 2 ei over l, but here i is equal to 2 i. So let me correct that. e times 2 i divided by 10. Member 2, 5 is fixed, fixed, which is 4 ei i is just i one i so divided by six which is equal to 0 0.67 for mi theta j it's half of it so i'm going to have 2 ei over l over six the length is six which gives me 0 0.33 what about member 2, 2, 3? For member 2, 3, remember we have a fixed end and a pin end, okay? And from the previous video, we, we saw that the formula was 3EI over L. But I here is 2I, so I'm going to write 2I divided by L, which is 3. This is going to give me... 2 and mi theta j is 0 so if you really want to know the formulas for this please try watching the previous videos i made before this one okay so now we are done with the member stiffness table the next thing we have to do is just write out the slope deflection equations for each section of this structure Right now I'm out of time so let's continue in the next video. Thank you for watching and I hope you subscribe if you haven't subscribed and also if this helped you don't forget to like this video. Thank you very much. Bye.